All right, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to another chapter review. This time we're going over chapter 309 and I know it's been a while since I've done a chapter review, but we're still gonna keep going because this one's pretty interesting. And I'm not gonna say that the last few chapters haven't been interesting because this whole story has been pretty good so far, but these are the spoilers as they just came out. So if you don't wanna hear what's going to happen in chapter 309, then I suggest you click off the video. Don't worry, I'll understand. But for those of you who do want to hear it, I suggest you grab some popcorn or your favorite drink or snack, sit back and relax because this one's going to be a good one. Without further ado, let's do this. We start off this chapter with two Ketsubetsu Academy third years looking up at the sky with a questionable remark on their face. Mr. Smith and Boomerang Man look up at the sky and can only say, what's that? Just as that question's being asked, we pan out to a shot of Deku holding a beaten and tied up muscular while carrying him through the air. And right about now is when I'm really regretting not covering chapter 308 because that ending with muscular versus Deku part 2 was everything to me. Honestly, I'm starting to like Deku a little bit more now as the story starts to progress and that whole thing that he has going on with his costume, it's an excellent design decision. The body is then identified as the escapee by Boomerang Man. We then get a shot of Yoshindo being held by his classmate Turtle Girl. I'm just gonna call her that because I forget her name right now. But Turtle Girl remarks that she hasn't thanked Deku for saving Yoshindo yet. But just as she says that, two people come in with a stretcher and try to carry Shindo to a hospital for medical attention. Turtle Girl looks worried but the man tells her that you can't carry him alone and that they've got everything under control. Shindo opens his eyes for just a moment and remembers that the guy that just saved him, he looked like he was a kid from the exam, but he was totally different this time. Was he really the same dude? Shortly after that, Deku arrives in the Diana police precinct in a cloud of smoke. Stop right there. State your business, exclaims the guard. You guys have an extra maiden to spare, don't you? Deku asks as the smoke begins to clear. The guards recognize the escapee and quickly go after him, but just like the Avatar, Deku vanishes. As Deku jumps from building to building, he remarks that the fourth user of One For All's quirk, Danger Sense, has calmed down, so he pulls out his phone and starts to talk to All Might saying, I'll be there. Meanwhile, in an alley, All Might waits with a pair of shades on. Just as Deku comes crashing down in a plume of smoke, All Might asks, any injuries? Deku assures him that he's not injured and his limbs are perfectly fine. And here's where Horikoshi hits us with a blast from the past as the mid gauntlets make a return. Deku notes that the support item that was delivered right before the travel restrictions were instituted really was a lifesaver. All Might tells him that this is just an endurance prototype and it's not the full thing. It's only supposed to reinforce the entire arm and it's not going to be able to contain his full power at 100%. All Might then reminds him that he'll need this for the final battle. Now, two things to notice here is that one, if you don't know what the mid gauntlets are, basically those are the gauntlets that Deku received in the first movie from All Might's friend's daughter. They seem to help him pretty good throughout most of the movie. So if this is anything like that, then Deku should have a good time with pulling off a 45% Wyoming smash and all his other state smashes. But another thing is that the final battle between Shigaraki and Deku is something that I cannot wait to see. I'm sure that's a sentiment that a lot of people have, especially after these past few chapters with Deku talking to his past successors. But the question is, will Deku be able to kill Shigaraki like Nana more asked them. But we can see here in this thought bubble, Deku just wants to complete the goal in whatever way he can. Deku notes that All Might used to use a similar support item during his Silver Age, and I'm not sure what he's really talking about. My best guess is that gold suit that he was talking about in the anime, I don't know if you guys remember that, but when Sir Night Eye was kind of quizzing Deku on his All Might knowledge that was bought up back in Season 4. But just like that, All Might's phone starts to ring, and surprise surprise, it's Hawks. And he's actually out in the field with Best Genus and Endeavor as they're taking down a sludge monster. Now, I am noting that Hawks isn't actually fighting, but he's doing his best to help, and it looks like he's getting better, but where are his wings? Have they been completely removed? Or are they in the process of growing back, but they're just nubs at the moment? As Hawks and All Might are having a conversation about Deku and how he's doing, Deku takes off immediately to the dismay of All Might. You seem overprotective. I mean, you're not trying to let anyone else in your surroundings get affected by this whole thing. Preparing measures to ensure security and all that, but whoever broke into Tartarus has a huge cheat on their side, and the risk of getting caught from just keeping it to yourself is pretty high. I know that these are trying times for you, but I request that you work together with us. And just like that, we get a team up with the top three heroes and All Might, so it seems like All Might's gonna have a bigger part to play in this final battle than we expected. I mean, heck, I thought All Might would've been dead by this point just a couple months ago, so better than nothing, right? 
But here's my question, where on earth is Aizawa? If All Might gets a part in this, I feel like Aizawa would be paramount in the final battle. You know, I joked around on Twitter about how because Aizawa had to cut off his leg, he's probably getting his peg leg, so I don't know, maybe he's doing that. Just as they wrap up that conversation, we flash back to the hospital Deku was in. You see, this was the time where Deku had just woken up and gotten his casts off and was being debriefed by the doctor. You were told before that if you were going to get hurt again, you wouldn't be able to move. Luckily, this is not the case here. In the past, you incurred injuries from within your body. This time, most of the damage was external. And can we stop for a second and just notice how the doctor looks like Mario? Is it just me or has he always looked like that? I could have sworn the last doctor that Deku had was like a mushroom or something. Deku remembers his many smashes against Shigaraki's body as the doctor continues his speech. In addition, whether it be a side effect of your quirk, your internal structure seems to have been protected on the inside and out. We then show scenes of Deku at 5 and 45% respectively. The injuries you sustained and your anatomy, they're completely different. Basically meaning that Deku's body is essentially getting stronger and used to his quirk. Now we all knew that this was going to happen, but at 45%, OFA seems pretty damn strong. So I wonder how much Deku can use right about now. Maybe about 85%, especially with his bid gauntlets on. Even so, you'll still have to be careful and stay out of harm's way. Just as the doctor finishes his debriefing, Inko sits at Deku's side and asks All Might if he could explain Deku's quirk to her. And right about now is when I completely forgot about Inko. I also joked that she probably was going to have a heart attack sometime soon, especially when she found out about all this stuff about the war. But by the look on her face, I'm not going to lie, things are going better than I expected. I hope you're okay with this young Midoriya, All Might tells Deku. So, that's why. This quirk can only be transferred to those without a quirk of their own, but because of this, some very bad people have set their sights on him. Inko asks All Might, with a worried look on her face, what happens next? All Might tells her, we're prepared to protect him. If it's UA and Deku cuts him off, I won't be going back to UA. All Might seeming distraught at the answer, along with Inko. All Might thinks to himself though, and sees that Deku's already made up his mind, and he won't try to change his decision. Deku explains his reasoning for giving such a wild solution, and says that Shigaraki can find his location at any time, due to one of his quirks. Even now, it wouldn't be unexpected of him to just attack. Deku stutters as he remembers the dozens of lives that were lost in the war arc, as well as some of his friends, which are still alive today, but were in critical condition at the time. Bakugo getting impaled, Gran Torino being hurt, Aizawa's leg being cut off, and Shoto being burnt to a crisp by his older brother. I don't want to see anyone get hurt anymore. If Shigaraki perfects his form sooner than later, the situation will go from bad to worse. I need to stop Shigaraki and AFO before that happens. And if this moment wasn't already hard enough, Inko then goes on to remind Deku that in the state that he's in right now, she just can't get over the fact that he'll be able to pull this off. Deku exclaims that he'll just get stronger. Inko, with tears welling up in her eyes, says that in the past, she's put her trust in him, but now she doesn't approve. She can't accept this as her only plan. Deku smiles down at her as he holds her hand. Inko starts crying, saying that I was happy for you. I laughed with you. I was happy then, but now? As she remembers the memories of a little kid with no powers, Inko remembers everything. All of the times Deku dressed up in his All Might pajamas and pretended to be such a hero, we see a parallel of mother and son embracing each other for what could be the last time. Deku calms his mother and says, which is why I have to go to save more people as Izuku might, but don't worry, I will come back. At this point, you just gotta feel bad for Inko. I remember in the beginning of the series whenever she used to get worried and start being annoying about where Deku was and how he was doing, but now I kind of sympathize with her. She's basically a single mother because, you know, we haven't seen the dad yet, trying to raise Deku and in a super powered world no less. And when your child wants to become a superhero, and not only that, when he's unable to become the best superhero, things going wrong is expected. All Might with physical distress plastered all over his face remembers the time when he first spoke to Inko about Deku and promised on his hands and knees that he would protect him no matter what. Even if I try to stop you, you'll still leave. So in that case, even if you don't want it, and just like that, things switch over to Best Genius's tower where he's on the phone with someone. You're coming with us? No, sir. I mean, sure. I wonder if that's a good plan. Excuse my crude language, but we already have Deku serving as bait for Shigaraki to track down. We'll make sure to stay close by so that we can intervene quickly if need be. Hawks and Endeavor just look confused right now as this side conversation is going on. By by the way, I love Hawks' face in this. <laughs> we then shoot over to the hospital that Gran Torino's staying in. He gives Deku a weak laugh and says, Is that right? Crying in the afterlife, huh? At least I ain't dead yet. Can't join you right now, Nana. As for you, kiddo, don't be too stubborn about redeeming Shigaraki. Sometimes death can be a form of salvation too. Don't you ever 
forget that. As he hands Deku the scarf that he holds now. And just like that, it's time to repay the favorites of the League of Villains as the top three heroes and All Might with Deku shoot off onto the battle scene. And that is the chapter. Listen guys, I really hope that Deku is able to kill Shigaraki, but what do you guys think? I feel like at some point Deku's probably not going to have the resolve to kill Shigaraki and probably find an Avatar The Last Airbender route and take away his powers, putting him in prison for life. Which, I mean, I guess was alright, but I want to see Deku cross that line, you know? He needs at least one body going into the future. But that's it for me today, guys. I hope you did enjoy. Hit that like button if you did. And if you want more chapter reviews like this or content similar to this, don't be afraid to hit that subscribe button. You won't be disappointed. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.